All right, in this Tobacco University video, we're going to be tackling the challenging subject of breeding cannabis autoflowers ruralis. We'll get to see some of the complexities and why it's so difficult, but hopefully through this video, you'll develop a greater understanding for the process. So first off, the advantage of autoflowers is breeders use these genetics to create plants that grow fast, typically around 70 days from start to finish, without the need to having to change the day length. It's simply based on the number of calendar days. Uh, so that can be uh, an advantage to many growers, both outdoors as well as indoors, not having to worry about the photo period their plants are under. So the trait of autoflowering is recessive. And it's a simple trait for growers uh, and breeders to observe. If you grow a bunch of plants under a 12-12 hour light cycle, that's 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness. And if it stays vegetative in the early growing, then that is definitely an autoflower and not a photoperiod dependent trait, such as you would have with an indica or a sativa. Recessive does not mean bad or negative. It does mean that the plant needs two copies, one from the material and one from the parental line, in order for the trait to be expressed. So this is an important note there. If we go back to our little Punnett squares for that recessive gene to be expressed, we would need two copies. In this example, yellow would be recessive, green would be dominant. We could see in order to get that yellow coloration, we need two copies of that recessive allele. Now, backcrossing uh, basics in the breeding process. So, backcrossing is a crossing of a hybrid with one of its parents or an individual genetically similar to its parent in order to achieve offspring with a genetic identity which is closer to that of the parent. Backcross hybrids are sometimes described with the acronym BC. For example, an F1 hybrid crossed with one of its parents or genetically similar individual can be termed the uh, BC1, and you'll see that in some of the images here, our hybrid. And a further cross of the BC1 hybrid to the same parent or genetically similar individual again produces the BC2 hybrid. This breeding process is more restricted to recessive traits. And we see that kind of BC1, BC2 terminology here. We're seeing a shift in that population. So let's take a look at continued examples of this back crossing. Uh, so this backcrossing, it follows a shown pattern of inheritance. Keep in mind that breeding autoflowers is a true breeding photo-dependent uh, variety. We're all looking at the patterns that are forming. We see that BC1, BC2 formation. All the offspring will be heterozygotes, which means they all be photoperiod dependent. So keep that in mind. If you're taking an autoflower and breeding with a true breeding photoperiod dependent, all of the offspring are going to be photoperiod dependent. Why is that? That is a dominant trait. However, it's important also to note that all of the offspring will be carriers for the autoflowering trait. So this is the F1 generation, and we're going to go through and breed from there. Um, so again, this is where things initially might skip that first generation, so don't panic. Bring it again, we'll then start to bring that trait out. So we breed that F1 with that F1. This follows a pattern shown of inheritance. Offspring of the desired trait will be needed and selected for. 75% will be photoperiod dependent since it's a dominant trait. 25% will be autoflowers. This is the F2 generation. We kind of see that here again with the breeding of the chickens. We have that original, we have that kind of back crossing, that same parent coming back again. We can see the, how the percentages are shifting as we go from our F1 or F2 to our F3 to our F4 generation. Now, if we're looking here specifically, we have the examples of mice, and the same thing can be applied to cannabis as well. This continued breeding and selecting will increase the amount of autoflowers within the population. Keep in mind, you may also want to watch for other plant characteristics, such as the morphology, the chemical, pro and pro chemical profiles, as well as many other things, to ensure you do not produce an autoflower that does not offer any other benefits. It'd be great if you could go through and breed an autoflower, uh, but if it's got the autoflower trait and characteristic, but nothing else, then it's not really worth it. Often this is done for five to nine generations because you get a more stabilization, in this case, of that recessive or autoflower gene. We see the same thing here. We're breeding some together. We get, um, we get some offspring. We get that transgenic mouse. We keep coming back to this line. Breed those together. We discard a certain percentage that don't have the trait we want. We then breed those together with the same uh, original parent and go through so on and so forth. We do that for multiple generations. You can see that first time we only have about 25% autoflowers and 50, then 75, then 87 and a half, 93.75, 96.8, 98.3, 99 plus. We're kind of getting that vast and quick ramp up increase in the amount of autoflowers. 
again, this can get kind of complicated and hopefully I'm uh, providing you with some information and some graphs that you can kind of look at and kind of go back and study. Uh, many traits are polygenetic, meaning there are multiple genes involved with the observed phenotype or how that individual looks. While the basic roles of dominant and recessive still uh, play a role in the combination of multiple genes will result in what is observed in the final product. So it's important again to keep that in mind. This is why may uh, take more than simply three, three generations to create that stabilized autoflowering trait, but the basics still hold true and should provide a good starting point. In kind of that example I gave with the mice, we kind of see that example here with the multiple back crosses going to 50 to 75 to 87 and a half to 93.75. You're getting kind of this curve here. You're not quite reaching that 100%, but you're getting very, very close as that's kind of progressing um, there. The percentage of the original heterozygosity that is homozygous in all future generations. So if you only did it for kind of that three generations, you still would have a pretty good mix. Um, that kind of, as I mentioned, five to nine is typically what's done. That you can do it potentially longer, so long as you keep in, keep in mind and remember to also look at other traits more than just autoflower to make sure that you're not getting some sort of strange mutation in the morphology of the plant or something else that is undesirable. You're carrying over that autoflowering trait along with other desirable traits to create a very unique and hopefully sought after genetic line.